Hey, Paseo Del Rey, I hope this video finds you doing well wherever you are. I know we have some friends that are currently doing our Paseo Pathway around the world. Um, and then, of course, we here at the church are, are two weeks into with our growth groups. And I, I just wanted to take some time and encourage you along the pathway, maybe provide some thoughts in your discipleship efforts. And so uh, today I particularly wanted to ask a question of what's your goal in doing the pathway? What's your what's your uh, reason for studying the psalm with a group of other people like this? Um, I, this might sound weird coming from a pastor, but your reason should not be Bible study. It, it should not be Bible knowledge. That's not the purpose and goal. Now, that might be a secondary result of the pathway, but that's not our primary goal. If you've never studied the Psalms before, then this might be eye-opening to you. You might learn something about Scripture, but knowledge about Scripture is not our end goal. Our end goal is to love God more. Now, so let's talk in light of that truth, then, what, what that looks like for you to actually use this as a method and way to love God uh, more really uh, and more fully, um, and not just treat it like homework or, or, or Bible knowledge for Bible knowledge's sake. So let me ask you this. If you set out to love a person in your life, more, what would you do? Like if you had a spouse or a child or a friend who you knew was hurting for love, how would you show that person love? Uh, it strikes me that I would try to go spend time with that person and, and, and pour into them and make them laugh and whatnot. But that's because my love language is quality time. Your Your way of receiving and giving love might be different, but whatever you would do, the same, the similarity in it is that you would do it intentionally. And in that nugget, I think, is where true love is. I think that's where the phrase, um, it's in the thought that counts, comes from. It's in that nugget of intentionality that somebody is thinking about you and is uh, doing something in light of you because they're focusing on you. That's where that feeling of being loved comes from. Now, I say all that to say this, that if you are going to use the Psalms and this whole reading plan as a method of loving God more, to set out on him and loving him more, then it's going to require intentionality on your part. It's it's not just about um, reading a plan, clicking that off. It's really going to require you to turn your focus onto God and say, okay, God, I'm going to give you my focus. It's that thought. It's that intentionality. That, that stirs this, that it's, I'm not just intentionally trying to learn, I'm intentionally trying to love you, God, and know you more by what I'm reading. Now, here's the difference. God is not some child or spouse lacking in love, and he's not lacking for anything. He's not in need of our love. In fact, in this relationship, we are the ones that are lacking. We are are lacking not in love from God. He lavishes that out generously upon us. No, we're lacking in love for God. And here's the problem. We were created to love God. And it's not until we're in a love relationship with him, like we were created to do, that we truly come alive. And so when Jesus gives us this great command to love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, he's actually not just commanding us to do it because uh, we're supposed to. He's commanding us to do it because that's what we were made to do, and it's the best thing for us. And so you can have all the Bible knowledge in the world, as Paul says in, in 1 Corinthians, but if you're lacking in love, you have nothing. And so ultimately, love is our end goal here. But I don't want you to hear this and hear me telling you, even with all of this with intentionality, to try harder, because that's never the gospel. The gospel is that God has done for us what we can't do for him. If we were capable of loving God on our own, out of our own intentions and trying, we wouldn't have needed Jesus. The gospel is that he does for us and plays for us. And so I want to I want to offer you a little prayer to pray before you sit down to read the Psalms and pray. And that's this. God, help me to love you more.
Help me to love you more. Help me to engage my soul and be real with you. Help, help me to make the goal of this love for you. And you'll be amazed that as you set out and you genuinely ask God to help you to love him the way that he begins to stir your affections for him. Hey, church, I'm praying for you this week. I'm hoping that, that you are finding this meaningful as I am. I look forward in coming weeks, ongoing conversations about discipleship. Um, but I just wanted to start here and say we don't do church for church's sake. We don't do religion for religion's sake. We do it because we are beautifully loved by God and invited into this beautiful love relationship with God. May this be an avenue where you learn more and more what that looks like for you and for the world around you. Be blessed. Talk to you later.